How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for biochemistry. A 25-year-old woman partakes in a research study in which she is completely fasting from food for 36 hours. She's only consuming water during this time. And we want to know what's likely to occur biochemically slash on a molecular level as a result of the fasting. Okay, so let's hop through. Choice A, decreased activity of pyruvate carboxylase is wrong. Don't confuse pyruvate carboxylase with pyruvate dehydrogenase. Okay, so pyruvate dehydrogenase is the enzyme you know about that brings pyruvate at the end of glycolysis into the Krebs cycle during the fed state. In contrast, pyruvate carboxylase is a gluconeogenic enzyme that's increased when we want to make more glucose. So pyruvate will be converted via pyruvate carboxylase into oxaloacetate in the TCA cycle. And then oxaloacetate goes backwards all the way up to phosphoenyl pyruvate. And then PEP will go back up to glucose. So you need to know for your simile that whilst pyruvate dehydrogenase is a fed state enzyme, pyruvate carboxylase is a fasting state enzyme that would be increased in activity in the fasting state. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased renal gluconeogenic activity is wrong. So even if you don't know how the kidney relates in this case, it doesn't matter because you know that in the fasting state you would have increased gluconeogenic activity. But the fact that I want you to know for you assimile is that in addition to the liver, which carries out the bulk of gluconeogenesis, the kidney also has some gluconeogenic capacity. You assimile wants you to know that. Okay, so they'll make it very simple. They'll just say which of the following organs can contribute to maintaining glucose level in the setting of fasting. And the answer would be kidney. It's not hard, but you just have to know the fact to add wrong fucking answer. Should I see glucose really spice skeletal muscles wrong? So this is an important point you have to know. Skeletal muscle lacks glucose 6-phosphatase. So skeletal muscle cannot directly make glucose. And they ask that on USMLA. So what happens is in the fasting state, if we're going to utilize skeletal muscle for energy, we break it down as amino acids. Okay, so proteolysis, you get the liberation of amino acids, which then go to the liver and are converted into energy. So glucogenic amino acids can undergo gluconeogenesis of the liver. Ketogenic amino acids, you can uh, get ketone bodies from them. But the skeletal muscle itself cannot make glucose. It's very important. They'll, they'll ask that. They'll have, for instance, glucose released by skeletal muscle is wrong. And next to it, they'll have glucose released by the liver. And you're like, that's a little bit weird. It's not both. No, it would just be the liver or the kidney, as we already talked about. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, increased ratio of glucokinase to hexokinase activity is wrong. So a bit of an obscure answer choice. So you need to know that glucokinase is the hexokinase variant at the liver. And it's increased in the fed state because we want to store glucose as glycogen at the liver. Okay, so if you say, well, we would expect in the fasting state that glucose is going to be preferentially used by cells throughout the body because we have limited glucose, we would not want it taken up by the liver. That's one way to think of it. Another way is glucokinase has a greater KM and a greater Vmax in comparison to hexokinase, has lower affinity for glucose because we don't want the liver taking up glucose when glucose levels are lower and has a higher saturation capacity for glucose because when glucose levels ultimately do go up, we want the liver to be able to handle that glucose load and store it as glycogen. So in the fasting state, we would expect glucokinase activity to be decreased. Glucokinase activity is normally stimulated by insulin and we know insulin is decreased in the fasting state. So if you just say, I know glucokinase activity would be decreased, then you can infer that the ratio of glucokinase to hexokinase as a hypothetical, it should be a decreased ratio in the fasting state. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, phosphorylation. 
glycogen phosphorylase correct answer. So glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme that breaks down glycogen. Glycogen synthase is the enzyme that builds up slash creates glycogen glycogenesis. So they want you to know for USMLE that glycogen phosphorylase is phosphorylated and activated in the fasting state. In the fed state, it's dephosphorylated and inactive. Okay, so it's a bit of an obscurity, but they ask it on USMLE. You should remember that insulin dephosphorylates, glucagon phosphorylates. So if you know that as well, you'd say, well, in the fasting state, I know insulin is lower. So we'd have less dephosphorylation. Okay, so that answers your question as far as we have increased phosphorylation if insulin is lower and we're in the fasting state. And I know glycogen phosphorylase should be active in the fasting state. Choice E, correct answer.